is not just a juice box. It is the same kind that astronauts use in space. <laughs> Any questions? Ah! Yes, uh, Marcus. The bathroom. Oh, yes, the most common space question of all. How do astronauts go to the bathroom? You see, the liquid enters the body here, and... Uh, Mrs. Snodgrass, I mean, I have to go to the bathroom, please. <laughs> Certainly, Marcus. <laughs> Normal bodily functions are not to be laughed at, especially in space. <laughs> Note to self, the 72 ounce Titanic sized soda is not part of a well balanced, nutritious breakfast. Don't worry, son. I will bring you back from the brink of oblivion. Uh, but uh, I feel fine, Nurse Cutlip. I will be the judge of that. Clear! Oh, no. We've got a code blue in the art room. One of the kids glued his tongue to a paper mache poodle. I will need three cc's of paste remover stat. Let's go! You all right, Marcus? Yeah, just a little wet. Come on, then. We have to finish our science project. Hurry! But it's not nearly ready. There you are. Everything inside is safe. Come have a look. Uh, I think I'll wait here. Do you want to be afraid of toilets all your life, son? Um... You know, a similar thing happened to my brother with a toaster. My brother got his snout just a little too close to the business end of a Bevington 4-4 fully automatic pop-up toaster. Two slugs of charred toast right between the eyes. Poor guy never knew what hit him. You mean he... So spooked by toasters, he hasn't had breakfast in 27 years. But he will take a substantial lunch. Now, come with me. Your first mistake was choosing to use the toilet I call Old Faithful. <laughs> Old Faithful is the last remaining original toilet in the school. In the old days, they built these babies with super wide pipes and giant holding chambers to accommodate tremendous water pressure. Yeah, it even flushes by itself. She's very temperamental. The slightest thing can set her off. Old Faithful has what I call the force. The force can be a good thing when used properly, but it has a dark side as well. <laughs> Remember the Force, son. I will. <laughs> oh, now hold on, Phantom. I'll bring you a cup of cool, refreshing, filtered water. There, much tastier than our old water, isn't it? And much healthier, too. More. Because instead of hooking into those rusty old pipes over there, I hooked the new system into these rusty old pipes up here. And the best thing about this new filtered water system is that you never have to change the filter, because there is no filter. Isn't it good, Phantom? It's cold, it's wet, it's water! I knew you'd love it. Oh, hey, sorry I couldn't be here sooner, but Buford needed to talk to me. Ooh, that's okay. I just finished. How can you be finished? Did you follow the plans? What plans? The designs? Oh, those. Sure, I followed them. Loosely. Oh, you didn't even look at them. Billy, I still have some flaws to iron out. No time for nitpicking, Marcus. But it's not ready yet. Relax, she's as ready as can be. She just needs a couple more rivets, that's all. <laughs> And I present to you, for the very first time, an actual built-to-scale mini space shuttle. Wow! Oh. Awesome! Oh. Right on! Oh. 
It's fully loaded, automatic, and comfortably seats four kids, each with his or her own beverage holder. Uh, actually, Mrs. Snodgrass, it isn't quite finished yet, according to the plant. Houston, we have a worrywart. Very impressive. I don't think I've seen such an ambitious science project in all my years here. <laughs> what is she talking about? How could she forget my model of the solar system? Yeah, right. How could she forget your model of the, the, what kind of model was it? The solar system! <gasps> I remember now the model of the solar system built by the troubled, odd-looking boy. She remembers you. Who can tell me the order of the nine planets? <laughs> Mercury, Venus, Earth, um... Nine, you say? Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Very good! Yes, yes, this too was a very impressive project. Accurate in every detail. Yeah, except it's not to scale. Not to scale! Not to scale! What did he say? Uh, he said not to scale. I heard him! All right, you want it to scale, you got it! A single file to the supply room, please, where we can hurriedly improvise spacesuits in order to take full advantage of the serendipitous opportunity. <laughs> Oh. Lydia, Marcus, Ruby, let's go! Oh. Are you guys sure this thing is safe? Well, we didn't exactly finish it according to plans, so we had to cut a few corners. She's as safe as can be, and she flies like a dream. That's just cosmetics. I wonder if we'll see any aliens. Highly unlikely, Ruby. There's no proof they even exist. Ah! Bon voyage! <laughs> that was Saturn. The planets are all out of order. Uh, do you know what this means? That I memorized the first three for nothing? This is how the solar system should normally look. And this is where the planets are now. If the planets continue on their present course, Mars is going to collide with Saturn, which will bounce off Jupiter, which will ricochet off Neptune and Venus. Venus will carry them off Pluto, and Neptune will rebound off Mercury into Uranus. Neptune then strikes the Earth and sends the Earth flying right into the sun. Every kid in the whole school will be burnt like a cafeteria french fry. How long before all this happens, Marcus? Oh, 16 minutes. <laughs> oh, 16 minutes, Redicus! <laughs> 16 minutes! <laughs> <laughs> 16 minutes! <laughs> what happens then? Ah, pay attention! <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Principal Mulligan. Perhaps you'd like to try this helmet. Oh, thank you, Ms. Demeter. It is a little stuffy in here. And there seems to be a problem with the lighting as well. You see? Just up there. You all that twinkling. <laughs> oh, you see it? Mm, it's rather pretty, isn't it? Oh, indeed. Uh, now watch. Just there. <laughs> oh, my. <sighs> uh, must be a short circuit. Uh, have Buford check the wiring. <clears throat> right away, sir. Okay. This is a floor plan of the school. The flashing blue symbol is the shuttle. Us. Why'd you pick blue? I look lousy in blue. 
Here's where all the planets have ended up. We've got to get the planets in their proper order to prevent a cataclysmic disaster. And we've got to avoid close contact with the sun and because of the heat. This will take some careful planning. Only 14 minutes left, Marcus. There's no time to be too careful. Billy's right. We have to hurry. But we have to do it right. Now, I think if we go to Mercury first. That's too far, Marcus. Look, there's the Earth right in our home room. All we got to do is get the other planets, tow them back, and put them in the right places relative to the Earth. We'll get to Mercury, but we might as well pick up a few planets on the way, right? There's a couple of big problems with that, Billy. You've got to listen to my plan. My plan is to avoid being barbecued. That sounds like a good plan to me. Hang on. And there's Pluto. Since Pluto spins in the opposite direction, I'll have to go around to catch it. Did you know it was named after a cartoon dog? All right. In relation to the Earth, Pluto should be placed in the science lab, but I really Watch do... Watch this. Billy O'Toole shoots for three! Good shot, Billy. And the crowd goes wild! Saturn's most remarkable feature is its ring system, composed of billions of ice particles orbiting around the planet. Saturn goes in the teacher's lounge. Billy, you have to listen to me. Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, next Mars, the red planet. It goes in the library. How's our time, you guys? Oh, 12 minutes, Billy. Mars? As in Martians, Mars? Ruby, there's no such thing as a Martian. Ah! <laughs> uh, sorry, Ruby. Just a little teaching aid there. Now, Lydia's right. Due to Mars's harsh climate, there is little chance it could support life. It is home to numerous volcanoes, though. No wonder she's been Olympic teacher of the year 17 the years in a row. In Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. Oh, I sure hope it fits in the cafeteria. No problem. <gasps> like a glove. Look out! What is that? Milk! They sure buy in bulk. You see what happened there, Radicus? They formed the Milky Way! <laughs> yeah, the Milky Way! Uh, I don't get it, Phantom. They smashed into the milk! Milk everywhere? They're in space? The Milky Way! What are we going to do? We can't even see out the window! Don't worry, we'll just... Marcus, where are the windshield wipers? They were on the plants. I guess you didn't install them. Hey, Rod, my man! Thanks! Well, uh, that'll be five bucks. I would have taken a quarter! Oh, 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 oh. See? Everything's gonna be fine. What is that? Comet! No, that was an asteroid. A comet is made of ice, like a giant snowball. An asteroid is more like a big hunk of rock. They often travel in huge clusters known as an asteroid shower, like, like this. I can't believe it! Those darn kids came out of the shower! Maybe we should give them a little privacy, Phantom. Ow! Kind of fun, huh? Not really! Relax, would you? Billy, I've been trying to tell you we have a problem. We have eight minutes left and three planets that are still on a collision course with Earth and the school. So what are we waiting for? Even in super turbo drive, we won't be able to cover the distance in less than nine and a half minutes. Why didn't you tell me this before? <sighs> I tried. In other words, we're gonna fry. It's a possibility. 
But if we can pick up Mercury and propel it at precisely the right velocity and angle it into Venus, Venus will rebound into Uranus and all three will head to the school like a billiard shot. Hang on! Whoa! There goes Mercury! There goes Venus! Good shot, Billy! Venus has been known since prehistoric times. It is the brightest object in the sky, except for the sun and the moon. Right on target! Mm, is what I do! I, I mean, they did it. Darn. You're one sadly confused rot. You are also quite incorrect. They haven't done it. They've forgotten about the sun. We still have to get the sun in the proper position relative to the planet, which means we tow it to the sub-basement. Three minutes. That should be enough time. Right? Just barely. But I wanted to avoid going anywhere near the sun. Hey, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the shuttle. This heat is unbearable. I've never been so hot in my entire life. Hey, you're forgetting this baby's equipped with heavy duty heat shields. Just one flick of the switch. What's going on? The heat shields aren't activating. I discovered a flaw in the heat shields a few days ago. I made the necessary modifications in the plans, but I didn't follow the plans exactly. Apparently not. I should have listened to you. This is all my fault. And you know what's even worse? Yes. The heat's taken all the body out of my hair. No, even though we're towing the sun, its gravitational force is actually pulling us closer to it. We're toast. Maybe not. What we need is an emergency plan. But there is no emergency plan. I'm working on it. Think, Marcus, think. He's good at thinking. If only there was a shortcut to the sub-basement. The Force, Marcus. Remember the Force. Old Faceful. Billy, take me to the bathroom. Marcus, you should have thought of that before we started this trip. Old Faceful is very temperamental. I figure one flyby should set her off. has been transformed into a black hole. Some regions of space exert such powerful gravity that they act like gigantic vacuum cleaners sucking in any matter that comes too close. Excuse me, you're not thinking of flying into a toilet, are you? Huh. Once inside the black hole, the ship's matter will be compressed. We should be able to fly down the plumbing pipe straight down into the sub-basement. Here we go! Whoa! First abrupt turn off you see, go for it. That would be right about now. Movie, cut the rope. Whoa! Oh, it sure is stuffy in here. Get me another glass of that cool filtered water. Ah! Drat! Those kids have aligned the sun into its proper position. They've done it. They've managed to maneuver the sun into the sub. Hey, maybe you'd prefer a nice cup of soothing tea, Phantom. Why you're complaining, Phantom? This is the most color you've had in years. Ow! Ow! Ah, ah. Oh, what a mess! Milk everywhere! Sticky, smelly, disgusting milk! I hate the stuff! Now that's what you call lactose intolerant. Another one for the files of Flying Rhino. 
Marcus, did you finish your 72-ounce Titanic soda already? Uh, I was really thirsty. Hey, my buddy can drink all the sodas he wants. It was his plan that got us out of this mess. Thanks, Billy. Uh, no, if, you, if you'll excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. On second thought, uh, I think I'll wait until I get home. <laughs> <laughs>